the, the point. Uh, qui, ça n'est pas Mark Zinga. Hein, je veux, Not je veux, Mark Zinga. Il y, y a une petite erreur sur There's la There's a mistake. La Ensuite, uh, Nadège Ouedraogo. And Nadège Ouedraogo. Uh, troisième film, je crois, avec les frères. Her third film with the Darden brothers. Uh, Alban Ukai. Alban Ukai. Uh, Qu'on avait vu dans Les Silences de Lorna. We saw in Lorna's Silence. Uh, Jean-Pierre Dardenne. Jean-Pierre Dardenne. Vous connaissez pas la Who you all know and needs no introduction. Entre lui et son frère Luc. Between him uh, and his deux, brother Luc. Uh, héros. Lokita et Tori. Heroes, Lokita and Tori, Joely Mbundu and Pablo Skills. À droite. And then on the far right. Luc Tijman Govertz. Tijman Govertz. Déjà, comme on a pris un peu de retard, il y a déjà des questions. We're a bit late. I think there are some questions in the room. Good morning. My name is Omar Franini, and I write for the Italian website ODG Magazine. First of all, congratulations for uh, the excellent movie. And the one thing that always uh, impresses me about your movies is the ability of casting uh, non-professional actors. Uh, I would like to ask you if you could uh, explain us uh, the casting process behind the role of uh, Tori and Lokita. And I would like to know if uh, the actors knew each other before uh, the movie because their chemistry felt so natural and uh, genuine. Thank you so much. Hello, uh, please, can you uh, ask for headphones because uh, the answer will be uh, in French? Oh yeah, you've got it. On va, on va essayer de répondre en français puisque... The answer will be in French. Alors, sur, le, sur le casting, uh, casting. est-ce que les deux acteurs se connaissaient Did the two actors already know each non, other? C'est-à-dire qu'on a fait le casting, We euh, on fait ça avec uh, Kevin. Did the casting Kevin, with Kevin, my son, who has a casting company nous, and who works with us. Et qui euh, récolte les photos... Uh, qui, qui l'obtient via internet, via la radio, la gets photos uh, from the internet, radio, TV, et and magazines. And we start with Lokita, le, le the female character a, in the film. Uh, très vite, uh, we quickly met Joey Lee jour, on the second jour. day. She was the 17th et, uh, uh, candidate. We asked her to come twice. Pour nous, c'était elle. And for us, sûr, she was just right. But we brought her back a second time just to be sure of our decision. Then we turned to our friend Tori, and that took a lot of time. Because we met good young actors, a lot of them. But they were maybe... Uh, a bit too meditative, or uh, they weren't uh, fast in their movements. We were looking, as you see in the screenplay, for someone who wasn't too big. And luckily, at the age of 12, he wasn't too tall, and we wanted someone who was really nervous. He's really explosive. He's uh, really taut. Sometimes uh, he turned. He turned in front of the camera, and we said, well, we didn't even see it. You went so fast. When we met him, we thought, oh, that's the right person. We hoped he would want to, to make the film, because that entails a lot of rehearsing and uh, shooting, three months in all. He was a very good student. He went to class uh, uh, during the uh, shooting, but he couldn't actually go to school. We had about a hundred candidates. Two of them might have been right, but uh, we thought to ourselves, well, he's just the right person. Also, when he sang, because he has a magnificent voice. Lokita as well, because we asked them to sing when we did the casting. They didn't know each other at all. They don't uh, even come from the same country, even if they uh, both live in Belgium. She lives near Brussels, and he lives in Sohan. And Sohan, that's where we shot a lot of the film. Could we ask the other two young actors whether they remember this uh, first casting session? Could they tell us uh, what they had to do? Well, that happened quite a long time ago, but uh, I remember as though it was yesterday. I first met Kevin and then the, the two brothers. We reread the script first. Uh, well, we, we introduced each other, we uh, read the script, and at the end I had to sing. I can't remember what I was asked to sing, but I improvised something. 
Vous avez lu des scènes du film Did you read scenes from the film for the casting On les change. C'est on s'inspire du film mais on les We draw inspiration from the film but uh, change the script a bit because we don't know who we're going to choose but these were scenes close to what was in the screenplay. We gave uh, the candidates two sheets of paper and uh, we alternated Jean-Pierre and I uh, Oui, je me souviens. Euh, Kevin était venu me chercher Kevin dans le couloir. Kevin came to fetch et, me in the hall. J'ai vu directement les frères au fond de la salle. I met uh, the two brothers at the back of the room. We got, we said hello to each other. D'exercice, on va dire. And then uh, I was given exercises and asked to sing at the end. What kind of exercises? As Luke said, bits of script which resembled the screenplay, but it wasn't exactly the script in the film that we actually used for the film. Thank you. Esther Poyon, I'm based in Strasbourg. Thank you for this very sober film. I have a question. Why did you choose this uh, popular Italian song? And why is there no off music in the film? I'll answer the first question because it's the easiest one. This Italian song? Lokita in the film says that this was the song we were taught by the woman who came to see us when we arrived in Lampedusa. A lady came to see us in the center where we were and she taught us how to sing this song, which is a song from her country. We knew that we'd have to find Italians, an Italian or Sicilian song for the film. I'm sure you understood what happened in the film. I don't have to tell you the story of the film again. They sing in Italian, they come from Africa, but they went through Italy on their way uh, to their final destination. And we said there are two young people who come from Africa. We'd like uh, you to ask them to uh, learn to sing sing a song because this person came from Italy originally. We didn't know which song it would be. And he said, well, uh, when I arrived in Italy, uh, I came from Belgium. And to learn the language, I uh, was taught this song because at the same time, it enabled us to discover words. It's a song where you learn lots of words. And I discovered Italian through this song. And uh, we thought, well, we'll do exactly the same thing. And what about the absence of music? In the film, we thought that there was there was the lullaby. And as we say each time, we have nothing against music. Uh, every so often there is music in our films. But uh, we didn't think there was any place for music in this film. It would have been superfluous. We felt there was no need for it. That's the explanation. Sometimes in a film we say, well, we'll try certain things, we don't include music. But here we never actually felt the urge or desire to add music. We thought the film sufficed as it was. We have the songs and the voices of the main characters. Congratulations for, sorry. <laughs> Congratulations for another new great movie, and important and brave. Uh, I was surprised from your answer about the music, because about the song, because the song is taken from uh, the Ibu Agadah of uh, Passover, and uh, there is also Israeli interpretation for that song of Chava Alberstein, who sing it in the uh, free zone of Amos Gitai. So, and I, I understand why you use the song because it's also tell the story of the situation in the movie. So, do you aware about that? It's based on the Passover. You're quite right. Definitely. But um, as in the previous question, it's because this uh, man told us what I explained earlier on, and we discovered that this song also had the kind of meaning that you just referred to. 
quand on va au marché de l'Est, when you go to the uh, market, uh, you have the Eastern market in Jerusalem. It's also an Arabic song. It exists both in Arabic and in Italian. But initially, it was a song in Hebrew. It uh, somehow refers to exile as well, which fully matched the situation of our two characters. My name is Gerda Tuzlic, uh, National Television from Bosnia and Herzegovina, Sarajevo. First of all, I'm so exciting because uh, one actor in this film uh, coming from uh, my city, from Sarajevo, and my congratulations for all team and especially for Alban Ukai. Uh, my first question is for Jean-Pierre. Uh, the Nobel Prize winner uh, was born in my country, Ivo Andric, once said that life is made of small things, but uh, that we really uh, miss them. Uh, with this film, you also treat the theme of small people and the great drama of people who only want a normal life. Does your scream reach far? How powerful is the film? And the second question is for Alban. I will wait, OK. I don't really understand your question concerning little people and whether the script goes further than that. What do you mean exactly by your first question? The first question. That, my, my first question, how, how is film important for, for this topic, uh, what you treated in, in, in this film, how, how it's uh, uh, going to the, to the uh, people who have to know that uh, Normal people uh, need a normal life. Yeah. Ça, euh, si vous voulez, nous, ce qui nous a intéressé well, if you ici, like what interested us in this film une histoire was to tell a tale of friendship enfants, between two children or an adolescent et and a child. Et de uh, aged uh, 17 and 11. We wanted to view things through the eyes of exiles who were in a very vulnerable situation et donc, on and dit, while the context was hostile. De leur amitié, so we tried to turn their friendship into their own country, their own territory, which enabled them to cope with the circumstances. We wanted to portray friendship in the film, also to denounce the situation. The uh, conditions uh, that minors have to endure when you're in exile, that's a very apt word. People leave for all sorts of reasons. There are six main reasons, according to the NGOs that help these people. There are people who are not in their home country, and they miss a lot of things. They feel desperately alone. That's why Lukita has these uh, bouts of anxiety. We met psychiatrists and read up on the topic. And this kind of anxiety uh, is typical in young exiles. They're in a state of total distress. They feel so very insecure. And these two characters, they try to find a family in this friendship. We all know that when you're in exile, the family is what misses people miss most. Alone, the people feel lost. And that's uh, what we depict in the film. So these little people, as you say, well, what interests us is the weak compared with the powerful. It's the life of the weak that we want to talk about. These are the characters we've always depicted in our films as central parts of our films, starting with The Promise. Uh, for the second time, uh, you are uh, working with uh, probably the most uh, awarded authors in the Cannes Film Festival. You come from uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, a small country of great film talents. Uh, how does it feel to be an actor in uh, official film at the Cannes Film Festival? I apologize for my French. I've understood the question. And I'll try to give you an answer. I promise you, Jean-Pierre and Luc, that I'm still studying French, but I'll answer in English. <laughs> uh, well, uh, first of all, thank you. And I'm, um, I was surprised when I get the message 
from Jean Pierre. Uh, in during uh, it was after, after the new year during the lockdown, uh, we did Lorna Silence like 13 years ago, and I thought that that was it. It was incident. I had the chance to work with Darden Brothers, and it's once in a lifetime. But I didn't think it was going to be two times in a lifetime. <laughs> and once I was in Cannes for 13 years, and this is the second time, both time with Darden Brothers. And I have to say, I'm very honest about it. My career changed after Le Silence de Lorna. Uh, my way of thinking of acting changed after the Silence de Lorna. And uh, after the process of working in Torre Lokita, uh, I just upgraded the way of thinking of acting. We all, uh, we actors, we go to the trap, especially the Balkan actors. We think about our close up and our five minutes of monologue that we will make uh, big roles. And when you work with Darden Brothers, you understand one thing that the important is to tell the story and not how good actor or bad actor you are. And uh, that's really a gift uh, to work with them, and when you get older, you don't think about the fame anymore. You think about the process that will stay in your life forever. And um, I'm pretty sure that this process and this friendship will stay in my life forever. And one just a little short thing. Um, I didn't learn French as I wanted to and as they wanted to, but uh, I got one thing from this movie. I stopped smoking thanks to the public. <laughs> <laughs> because he told me one day during the rehearsal, he exactly. said, Foo, you stink. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, wow. <laughs> and then I stopped smoking, yeah. So I'm very thankful. <laughs> <laughs> Puisque la parole a été donnée à, à un acteur, je vais As an actor has spoken, I'd now like to give the floor to all the others who haven't spoken much. We'll start with uh, Joely and Pablo. On the set, how do the brothers go about their work? They're known to do a lot of takes in order to get exactly what they want. Were they very precise in terms of the text? How did things work on the set? It's true. There were a lot of takes, particularly during the long sequence with Charlotte de Brun. We worked hard on that segment of the film. It took us a certain amount of time. You worked before the shooting or during the shooting? Before the shooting as well with the psychiatrist, so I could have my bout of anxiety. We worked a lot together between the takes as well in order to revise the situation. It's not really stressful to work with them because they really put us at ease. It's very reassuring, on the contrary, and we learn a great deal with the Dardan brothers. How do they make you feel at ease? I don't really know how to describe it. It's just what I feel with them. I get uh, positive vibes, as you say in English. They're very reassuring. They teach me so much all the time. I feel very much at ease with what they say, and they're a great source of inspiration for me. When there are a lot of takes, do they tell you why you have to do the take again? It depends. It depends on the take. Pablo? Pablo? Because I'm young, they uh, really adapted to my age. Sometimes we had to do a lot of takes. Sometimes even we had to redo things the next day because we ran out of time. But I never felt stressed or embarrassed because they always adapted to my age. So I felt very relaxed and I just enjoyed acting. Did you find any particular scene especially difficult? I don't really remember because there were so many different scenes. I only remember some of them. 
In the case of some scenes, uh, well, they took more time to do than others. When you act with somebody else, you have to adapt to the other actor. So that uh, can take more time often. Well, now, we'll start with the other actors. Charlotte? How do things work? How did the rehearsals go in the actual shooting? Alban said something which I also felt. I was with the Darden brothers only for a couple of days, but uh, that experience has really changed the way I act. For me, as an actress, it was an incredible experience, and I'm very proud and happy to be in this film, which I find totally incredible. Nadej? Ça fait la troisième fois? It's the third time for you? Yes. Did things evolve from film to film, or is it always the same setup? No, it's never the same thing. Because uh, we're not talking about the same subjects. Each film, therefore, is a special experience, as colleagues have said. With each film, we learn even more in terms of acting and how to really become the character. How did you approach this character? Because she's not really a very nice person. No, she's not nice at all. Did you try and find explanations or reasons why she uh, is the way she is? I think the character is quite a complex one. In fact, you wonder why this person persecutes uh, young kids to get money out of them. It's so very complicated that you don't really understand how, why anyone would do that kind of thing. So you want to really uh, keep a distance. Well, it was a, a wonderful experience, even if it was tough. Tillman? I'll try to answer in French, which isn't my mother tongue. I'd like to repeat what Charlotte and Alban mentioned up until the end of the uh, film and up until now. I've thought so much about the actual shooting of the film because it radically changed my life. It changed the way I view the cinema, the way I view others. And now I find it very difficult to find a director I really want to work with because their precision, well, you'll continue working with us, I hope. Exactly. They have outstanding qualities as directors. How can I phrase this? Deserve. Well, it's. I think that what the films they make is really the quality they, that uh, the audience deserves, and um, it's really nice to be a part of that. And uh, for me, it was a first time to 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 play a, a more um, to play a méchant. Normal, uh, normally in Flanders, I always play the the gentle one. <laughs> and uh, so in the beginning, I really didn't know how to play it, but I'm very happy. I could. Uh, they saw me in a completely different way. Um, so, yeah. Merci yeah, beaucoup. Me too. Uh -huh. Merci. Thank you. Alors, je voudrais reposer une, une question euh, aux frères I'd like sur, to ask another question euh, to the Darden sur la, la construction du, du scénario proprement dit. Au départ, I vous avez dit about the structure le of the film. De, you said at the beginning l'idée euh, qui vous a motivé au départ, c'est that uh, inspired the film was friendship. And then you found the right context to, to portray this friendship? It's tough to organize things. You don't really know when ideas start falling into place. We'd been talking about this idea for quite some time. There are several things. You have the story of the children. We went to visit a MENA center, which is a center for child exiles who are unaccompanied in Belgium. We didn't 
on pensait faire un film. Really know what we wanted to do, but we thought we'd make a film chez ses enfants. Parce que comme Luc l'a dit tout à l'heure, characters chosen from among these children. And through them, we'd see how society works, how the world is faring, through the eyes of these children. We thought that would be a good idea. We wanted to uh, depict these very weak people where the power play is very cruel. That was the initial idea, and it dated from a couple of years ago. And then we also wanted to tell the story of an African family where the mother had to go back to Africa while the children were to stay in Belgium. And the parents say, well, we're going to leave you, but we'll come back, but you must remain closely united together, otherwise you'll die. All this continued to mature in our minds. Okay, we've grown older, we have quite a, an experience, we've already made a number of films. And I think that at the same time, we both started to think we should make a film with uh, children as main characters. Already, with Ahmed, the kid with a bike, and the promise. When you view things through the eyes of a child, it's very interesting for we adults. Because children carry the future within themselves. They represent the future, and this future guides them, this idea of a possible future despite adversity. And we thought, well, it'd be lovely to work with characters who are very young. A young girl and a young boy turned into Lokita and Tori. We thought they'll be Mina children, and there's something that will guide us in the film when it comes to building the story. The main theme will be friendship. Friendship between these two children who are totally alone in the world. How, thanks to this friendship, they will manage to overcome obstacles, fight against these obstacles, dream about their future, and have fun, because there's tremendous love of life in these two children. So that was the initial idea. And we wanted it to be an adventure film at the same time. You have all this movement when they're going to the hangar, where you have all the cannabis climbing up uh, into the hangar, and uh, then going down inside using the broom stick uh, in order to push the machine. It's quite an adventure. Lokita is the person who uh, suffers from the world, and she tries to send money to her mother. He helps him, her, of course, but Lokita suffers more from this uh, slavery than he does. It's a bit as though Lokita got all the blows, and uh, Tori reacts in order to save Lokita. You have all this movement in the film which depicts this, the way the little boy darts here and there. And we thought, this is the kind of thing, this movement, which uh, will make it possible to save the life of uh, uh, his friend, who he views as his sister. We've all, we always saw the little boy as sort of a firefly. He darts around so quickly everywhere, and he really gets the film moving. Perhaps you also wanted to follow characters who are extremely mobile, and others are less so. Your camera accompanies them in their movements. That perhaps dictated the, the sets. Yes, 
uh, she is prisoner. He is also prisoner of the same system, but at the same time, he manages to escape. And that's what we really loved in the story. I think we found this balance. It was in the uh, script already. It was written down. And then when they showed us what they could do in the room, one went over the bed, one under. It was a sort of uh, hide and seek. We rehearsed these scenes and decided to use the same movement uh, in other parts of the film. When you went to the place where the film was uh, going to be shot, did you actually try out their parts? Yes, to a degree, but not exactly. It, it became a bit more complicated at that point. Uh, Luke often does the two characters. Uh, and I, then I say, uh, uh, then my brother says, well, the camera will go here, or the camera will go there. But it's on site that uh, when we're rehearsing, that we decide where to place the camera. Our uh, DOP, of course, uh, also finds things, uh, and even the sound engineer. We didn't make the film, the two of us, before actually shooting the film. A lot of things are invented when we're actually on the set. But we like to find the right camera movement. We like to find the choreography between the camera and the actors when rehearsing. We film the scenes, we change change things, change the pace, but uh, rehearsing with our video camera, just the two of us and with the actors, is an important point in the making of our films. That's why we both want to make the same kind of film, because we really sense things together. For us, what we want to, to say, the meaning of our films, uh, lies in the movement, the physical movements of our characters. Our characters walk a lot, and it's when they're walking, I believe, that uh, the meaning of the film starts to uh, become apparent, and spectators can then help uh, participate in building up the meaning of the film. To start with, you thought you'd have a real sister and brother. When did you decide uh, to use uh, people who would just pretend to be brothers and sisters? Well, it's what Jean-Pierre was saying. It was in 2014, 2015. We had the Ankai family. That's a family we knew from Cameroon. The mother, Ruth Ankai, is the person who taught uh, the song in Musgum, which is spoken in the north of Cameroon. We saw in the press a lot of journalists said they both come from Benin. He comes from Benin, Tori. Lokita, and Lokita comes from Cameroon, the northeast of, or northwest of Cameroon, where the people speak Musgum. And the person who inspired us, and she has a daughter called Lokita, well, she inspired us to tell the story of a family, and she's the one who taught them Musgum and who taught them how to sing the little lullaby. The story I told you about earlier on, no, we didn't. We decided not to use the, the family, but uh, we had the names Lokita. That was the name of someone in that family who we personally knew. They're not real brothers and sisters. Well, that is, came to us as soon as we started writing the script. We thought it's going to be very, it is very difficult to get uh, ID cards and papers. We have uh, these unaccompanied children in Belgium. There are several statuses. When you're not a refugee, it's more complex when your country isn't racked by war. And she was what we call a mandated child, mandated by the uh, parents, sent by the parents uh, from Africa to Europe, because they imagine, they don't really know what it's going to be like, but they hope that the, the child will be able to earn a bit of money, and the money will then be sent back to the family. And these children who are sent to Europe, for them, it's very difficult uh, to get the requisite documents. Of course, she hopes to be able to get a job, to learn how to be uh, a maid or a cleaner. She hopes she'll be able to get the right documents. But if uh, that's not the case, these uh, children 
are sent back uh, to their country of origin. And I hope this will disappear one day. When you arrive as a minor, I hope you'll be able to remain in the country and, and attend school and, and learn a job. I hope we'll stop uh, sending these children back when they turn 18. So that was her status. Child, a child who is persecuted, can more easily acquire the status of a refugee. Being the sister of this uh, child, well, that's something they imagined between themselves. If they were brother and sister, well, that's why they were able to sleep in the same room in the uh, children's shelter. It enables them to do lots of things as brother and sister. And this invention, as I said, this fiction, it's their fiction, but it's more real than reality, and it helps them to survive. When Tori says to Betim, well, how are we going to be able to earn money to send back to our mother? The woman has become his mother, too, because they've grown so accustomed to saying they're brother and sister. Très bien. Uh, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Uh, nous allons devoir arrêter I là. think we'll have Encore to wind up. And congratulations.